Good afternoon, Mary. Um, the challenges of code enforcement in the city from abandoned houses to appropriate uses are ultimately about the discrepancy between the vision the residents of Atlanta have for the city and the realized physical environment. As such, the questions about code enforcement address the condition of the regulatory framework or codes in a holistic fashion. These questions are framed around five issues. Your vision for the city, aligning the code with that vision, the public process, educating the public, and enforcement of implementation. The first question is briefly, what would you do to ensure that the codes align with yours and ultimately our physical vision for the city? The, um, David, as you know, I have always wanted to have the zoning code, um, I, I wanted a complete rewrite of the zoning code. I wanted it more understandable. And, you know, an example is when uh, we had the infill issue and you really had to bring in um, the architects and builders and renovators to look at the code to be able to decipher what needed to be adjusted. So it has been a difficult code. Um, and during that process, one, the Home Builders Association came up with their suggestion, which I thought was pretty magical. They said, if, it, if the plans, if what's being built doesn't conform to the plans, not just a technical change, but a material breach, you tear it down. If you, if you demolish without a permit, you forfeit your right to build. Now, that's really tough love, but you and I both know that we do cat and mouse all the time. And so people who are obeying the rules and playing by the rules, they can't get their projects through because you've got the cat and mouse of people that are not obeying the rules. So, uh, so what specifically then would you propose um, as a strategy for reorganizing the codes? I need to get a group in to take a look. Can we do form-based coding? Can we, um, we have... As you know, in our residential um, R1 through R5 zoning, very few, um, uh, very, very few rules um, at all. And then when you get to your LCI districts and your historic districts and other districts, they have tre uh, a tremendous, uh, and SPI districts, they have a tremendous amount of overlay of, of rules and, and design criteria and whatever. So I am interested in having a new commissioner of planning and development who can tackle that because we know what we want to see. We know, you know, you know it when it's right, but if you're not a professional in the field, it's awfully hard to read the piece of paper and know what it's going to look like, know what the elevations are going to look like. And that's interesting because you've uh, described the, the idea that you'd put a task force in place, and I personally have experienced that several times in the history of the city of Atlanta. And they rarely come to fruition that we see. So what would be different about the task force that you would set up from previous task force that have addressed this issue? Well, as you know, when, again, going back to infill, which is the, the um, instance that I had, when the, when the six groups of professionals um, under the American Association, uh, the American Institute of Architects, uh, when they came together to look at the infill um, issue, they came up with the, with the solution in six weeks. And so from March 15th to, to the end of May, they came up with a solution. And they drew the elevations, and it was seven different, pretty specific, you know what I'm talking about, the, the, the new definition of basement and attic and the, and the, grade line, the grading. And, and so what was interesting about that is it took another year for me to get that, that legislation out of the planning department. It broke my heart because we lost a whole year. Now, when I finally got it out of the planning department, so I think it's politics is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The reason they haven't worked is politics. When it got out of the planning department, I personally took the diagram because they had done the diagram and I reduced it to one page and took it and sold it to NPUs. And we had three-fourths of the NPUs that voted in favor of it. It was very complex. And, and what the planning department said is, Mary, we get a lot of legislation that comes to us from council or the administration. Seldom has anyone been the spokesperson that you were to go out, explain it in a way that the NPUs could understand it. They were comfortable with it. They voted for it. It passed council unanimously. And so that's my real life. 
And that's, uh, that leads to my next question. Clearly, you think we can create a more transparent and efficient me method for code and zoning review, but how would you actually implement that? In that case, you went to each of the NPUs, but you won't be able to do that as mayor. So what will the structure be to allow that to happen that will be different than what's currently or has in the past happened? Well, I think we have to require that, you know, if you want to... Um, whether you're a council member or whether you're a member of the administration, that you really have to do the one-page snapshot. Uh, we haven't done that. I have seen legislation go out to NPUs, and they have no idea. So it's, I think it, it starts with making sure that the planning department, those planners that are out in the neighborhoods, that they know what the, the, re, the ramifications and the uh, different salient points are, and that they have it so that they can then spread that information. When I did infill, I did, um, I met with each of the planners in just one meeting, gave them my cheat sheets, and so they were also armed. So on the few that I didn't get to, they also voted for it because they understood it. So if I understand correctly, your goal, your idea for um, creating a, a system of education for the citizens of Atlanta is really these one-page cheat sheets or, or however you want yes. to describe them. But it is a very complex issue, and I think that there might be some situations where it might require more substantive discussion than a one-page uh, kind of sound bite. In those cases, how would you address the education of the, of the citizens of Atlanta? Give me a specific, David. What are you talking about? Um, <clears throat> for instance, I think there are certain uh, relationships. For instance, you've said that you want to maybe use a form-based code. Well, there are certain statutory uh, difficulties with utilizing a form-based code, administrative difficulties with using a form-based code. That's a sound bite that people have used in the past, which can cause significant problems if it's adopted. In fact, it's only been adopted in one juris large jurisdiction throughout the United States at this point. So sound bites can get us in trouble. I don't think that's necessarily what the citizens want. I think they want more than that. And so I'm trying to understand if there are more substantive issues, um, how would you deal with those? And we could go into the infill housing, which had other substantive issues with, that weren't necessarily addressed in that process. The, um, I think it's on a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, are you talking about um, a change in commercial zoning? Well, are you talking about... Uh, specifically with the infill housing issue, there are okay. several loopholes that uh, still allow groups to, or builders to go around the requirements that we see. So there's still an inconsistency in our vision for the city and the actual execution of the project. Luckily or unluckily, we've had an economic downturn, which hasn't allowed that to come to realization. When it goes beyond that single page, how do you... How do you propose to respond to those issues? For instance, all of the, um, the houses that are, that is a code enforcement issue, all of the houses in these neighborhoods that are uh, abandoned right. and, and, and safety issues, that cannot be resolved through a single one-page blurb. There are legal issues and, and process issues that have to be dealt with. So how would you begin to set up a system to educate and process that? Well, and, and we are, now we're shifting from zoning, you know, zoning regulations versus housing code and, and housing violation and um, code violations. Um, I, in that instance, uh, everyone knows that I had been very involved in the whole mortgage fraud, abandoned houses, and back when the Affordable Housing Task Force was operating, uh, I went to them and said, we have an awful lot of affordable houses in neighborhoods, and I was concerned about the policy being d bonus density credits on uh, in the big high-rises and land assemblages, and those were the two um, those were the two focuses of that of that entire endeavor. So I was the one that sh tried to shift it back to houses. And one of the things that I did with the housing opportunity bonds was to lobby for and get the Home Atlanta program, which was down payment assistance, and we now have put hundreds of people back in houses throughout these neighborhoods in the city using the Home Atlanta program. So, so in that case, it was, it was more than a sound bite. It was more than a snapshot. But again, through my communication via the web, my own website, which had a lot of inf has a lot of information on it, as well as my being involved in communities and out, whether at an NPU meeting or, or in other, other arenas, um, being, explaining to people what my vision is. Thank you very much.